there are a variety of tools for interacting with and debugging networks. Um, here are some of them. Probably the most common ones to use to diagnose a problem would be ping and trace route. And we'll see what they do in a moment. Um, but there are also very common tools like ifconfig, which shows your network configuration information, TCP dump, which listens for communication on particular ports, and route, which shows the route table of a device. Um, if we have a broken connection between two computers on a network, the first step that we might want to do to try and debug this process is start by pinging um, connections from one computer to another and can pinging all of the interspersed routers along the way. Um, if that does or doesn't work, we can use traceroute to see what path is our information taking and where does it fall away. And we can check um, the configurations and the flow of uh, traffic through that network using something like TCP dump. Ideally, what we're trying to do is we're trying to uh, determine the location using um, traceroute or, or ping. Uh, then we'll locate the the cores, which could be using ifconfig or route, and then we'll try and repair it by editing the etc network interfaces file. So what a ping is, is a ping makes a packet and sends it from where you are to some target destination, and then it listens for an echo coming back. So it is literally just shouting out something and listening for an appropriate echo. That means uh, your information has to travel from you to your target and from your target backwards. And it's that second point, that return, that is really important as a debugging tool. Um, we can use a tool called Bash Scripts, or we did in the labs, to create uh, a way of pinging multiple machines at the same time. Um, and Bash Scripts are kind of tricky, as I'm sure you'll see by now. Um, but the real kind of core of all of these network connections can be found in the etc network interfaces file on any Unix uh, Linux based device. Um, what these files contain is the configuration parameters for all the different interfaces on a network. So what do I mean by an interface? Well here's an example of an interface that we can see on the screen here. This block of text here is an interface. This is not an amazing interface, this is a simple interface which is called the local loopback which allows the machine to communicate with itself. The more important one is the one below it, this interface right here. This is an interface with the machine to other machines on the network and we can see that for starters it has a name, the name of this interface is F0, we can see that its IP address is static and then we can see what the IP address is. So this line here is what sets the IP address. This is where we set the IP address to be 10.0.1.2. The net mask, which we'll come back to later, uh, is set by that line. And then the gateway, which again we'll come back to later, is set by the line below it. So this interface, and only this interface, has that IP address. If I had more interfaces, more ways to connect to different networks, then I might have multiple of these, and I might have multiple IP addresses. Um, once you've edited or changed that file, uh, you do have to reboot the machine or use IF F0, um, IF down, F0, and IF up to turn it off and on again to reload those changes, um, and they go into the route table. If you type route, you will see a table like this displayed by any computer or router. Um, and what the, the main thing that you need to focus on with the route table are these first three columns here. Oops, sorry, we'll go back. These first three columns on the end here. This line is the net mask, which we'll come back to later. Net mask. Uh, this line is where is your traffic being sent to and this ma this line here this column is the destination so if we take uh, the line up here it says all traffic not destined for this network will be sent to this machine and notice that this is 10.0.1.1 this is the IP address of a specific machine on the dot one network it's saying that machine will deal with all of the other traffic that I don't know what to do with. This line here, however, that one there, that's saying 
traffic for the 10.0.1 network, I'm on that network. I have an IP address on the 10.0.1 network. That means I automatically know how to communicate with it. That's why we've got a star there. We don't need to send it to anyone else. These lines over here, these columns are important, but we're not going to worry about them too much in Engineering 110. And so to add more routes to this table, we add lines to that ETC network interfaces file. For example, this one here, this line here, uh, this adds a new route to this network, the, sorry, the 10.0.2 network, if I underline it, this adds a new route to the 10.0.2 network, that dot zero at the end, that means we're talking about a network, not a specific machine. This line of numbers here is the net mask, and we're saying via 10.0.1.1. So all this says is all traffic ultimately destined for the 10.0.2 network, we're going to pass on to this machine, and we're going to assume that this machine knows how to deal with it. The next line down um, is how to delete a route if you're doing this via the command line and to add a default route, which is a catch-all, um, we add it using this syntax here. This line up here, sorry if I change my colors, this will be easier. This line here is a specific route. This line here is a general default route. And in general, your traffic will follow the most specific route that it finds first. So it will only follow a default route if it does not find a more specific route to a network that it's destined for. So for example, this is what this appears like in a network interfaces file. You can see our line down the bottom here. Um, and that is how you edit and add routes using an ETC network interfaces file.